Broadcasting more than 2,000 games live and archived in 15 sports in over 10 counties in western Pennsylvania. As well as being the exclusive home for all the WPIAL playoffs and championships for nearly two decades. Anytime, anywhere, always there. We are the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. Welcome to PIHL High School Hockey on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. High School Hockey at Trib, HSSN.TribLive.com is sponsored by the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League, by UPMC Sports Medicine, by Carlo University, by AstroTurf, by J&J Distributing, by the Mount Lebanon Ice Arena, and by Trib Total Media. Now let's head out to the rink for all the high school hockey action on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Good evening and welcome back or welcome in to RMU's Island Sports Center on Neville Island. Continuing coverage of the 2018 PIHO All-Star event, the nightcap as the AAA All-Stars will take the ice. I'm Adam Horner alongside Kevin Zomanski. The streaming video today brought to you by undoubtedly the better half of the Roundtree marriage, Chelsea Roundtree over there on video for us today. And Kevin, uh, you know, it's the mid-season classic, if you will. The All-Star event, always fun. You know, you, we, we, we've talked to these players how many times over the years, and they always all say the same thing. It's fun to get out there and just play a game, play with guys you don't normally play with, uh, yeah. You know, see guys from your travel team, of course, get a chance to play with them for a day and just have fun. And, it's, it, and, you know, these kids always seem to enjoy it. And I will say the level of competition, I think, is, for me, usually a step higher than you will see at the NHL level because these guys know in a month they're going to be playing in the playoffs. So I think you get some competition in these things. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how the players and coaches approach uh, this. I always kind of adopted, hey, we're here. Let's try to win it. Um, and then... In the locker room, you're doing some wheeling and dealing for line combinations. Do you want to uh, do you want to play with teammates from your high school team, or are you kind of sick of those guys and you want to skate on lines and defensive pairings with teams with uh, players from other teams? Uh, maybe those guys are your teammates on your weekend amateur team or something like that. Right. So that's always interesting to me to see how the wheeling and dealing goes as Mr. Greg Kaminsky walks past the associate commissioner. So that's interesting. And, um, you know, people always want to be picked for these, Adam, and not yeah. all of them show. Some guys will be selected and they're not here for weekend commitments. Right. But the ones that are here <clears throat> appreciate it. And I honestly think the people who appreciate it the most are the people sitting in front of us in the stands here. I think it's the biggest deal for the parents and other members of the family, grandparents, maybe siblings. I think they get the biggest kick out of it out of everyone. For the kids, they show up, and as you mentioned, hopefully have some fun. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's supposed to be a fun event, and I think, and again, it's, it's perfectly timed in the PHL. You know, right before, you know, that last month of the regular season, you do this, and then the competition kicks in a high gears head down the stretch and try to get those last couple of postseason spots. Yeah, th for a hockey season that begins, not the, necessarily the PHL season, practices, amateur season begin Labor Day weekend. Sometimes they start practicing in August. You hit this time of January, th this is the dog days of the hockey season. Yeah. Much like they talk about the dog right, days of August for baseball. For so, yes, this kind of breaks up the monotony. Yep. And you get a little something different, and then you can refocus for the stretch run and get ready for the playoffs. Absolutely, which is what's happening. Let's turn to a public address for the announcement of our rosters. First, the homestanding Number white two, team. Mitchell Crehan. Number three, Brian Fogel. Number four, Johnny McDonald. Number five, Frankie Rotello. Number six, Jay Ort Arathatev. Number seven, Giovanni Palumbo. Number eight, Zach Rudoy. Number nine, Vin 
Vince Batuccio. Number 10, Mac Martin. Number 11, Anthony Sandora. Number 12, Calvin Raymore. Number 14, Christian Stewart. Number 15, Wyatt George. Number 16, Josh Rip. Number 17, Jason Beal. Number 18, Conrad Deemer. Number 19, Connor Gerlowski. Number 20, Griffin Early. Number 29, Adam Ulan. And number 30, Nick Guimond. Head coaches for the white team, Rick Tingle and Gary Klopowski. And now for the blue team, number one, Logan Johnson. Number two, Tyler Dudastat. Number three, Colin Patton. Number four, Patrick Kelly. Number five, Bryce Corner. Number six, Clay Patochny. Number seven, Connor Bachman. Number eight, Anthony Adamski. Number nine, Joseph Costa. Number 10, Jimmy Sturm. Number 11, Hayden Shimko. Number 14, Gio Sarachin. Number 15, Tyler Draper. Number 16, Jacob Krzyzewski. Number 17, Dominic Borriello. Number 18, Donovan Cullen. Number 19, Michael Spokane. Number 20, Bernardo Vieira. Number 29, Ryan Heil. And number 30, Connor Strobel. <laughs> Coaches for the blue team, Anthony Rocco and Mike Bagnato. <laughs> and let's hear it, fans, for the Class AAA All-Star. And the first team there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor America and those who serve and protect this great country, please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Direct your attention to the flags for the playing of our national anthem.
All right, guys, let's play a little hockey. Gordon Bombay, the Mighty Ducks, 1990. Adam Horner, Kevin Zomanski in the house. We got a of that for the uh, promo. I, I heard, I heard. Uh, we've dipped into that well a couple of times over the years. Mr. Roundtree loves that movie. It's, it's, how can you not? I've got the trilogy on DVD at home. I, it's, it's great stuff. The whole set. We'll do our best to try to get the lines established as right. they go out there, but it's going to be kind of difficult as they uh, change up all the time. Looks like on a white team we're going to have three players from Peters Township. Yeah, looks like they will, they will line up. Uh, I, I'm sure Connor Gielorowski is going to be one of those guys, number 19. Indeed, he is also, we see, uh, 18 Conrad Deemer, and I'm going to guess. Kelvin Raymore, 12. There you go. Defense so is two, Michael Crehan. <coughs> and Brianna I think Peters. that's Jay Orvitz over there. Yep, you're correct. Orvitz the PA of Cannon Mac. butchered his name. <laughs> and we will drop the puck. Blue team moving left to right, white thus right to left on your mouse pad as we are underway at RMU, the AAA I want to say triple A, the 3A All-Star game. That's okay. To cap our uh, day of hockey coverage, the All-Star event. Yeah, the, it's the NHL's day too, but it's also the PIHL's right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. As the blue team will steer it in. Now Orvitz, the lone Peters kid, not on this opening line, has the puck. The right-handed shot will dish it up the right wing side to Gilarowski. White team trying to gain the zone. And they will, still managing to stay on side, comes back out to the point. Can corralled there by Crean. He's trying to wheel back into the slot area. A little backhand pass. Try to go back door to Raymore. Couldn't hit him. Now the blue team controls behind the net. Coming around the boards for number three, Colin Patton, the senior from Plum. He controls. Dishes over to number 20, Bernardo Vieira of N.A. Now up for Dominic Borriello of Plum. He dishes up the left wing boards. Peters, I should say, it seems like Peters. Peter, one of Peter's kids, controls it for Team White. Dumps it up ice back to center red. Both teams changing lines. Now with flying into the zone for Team White is number four, Johnny McDonald of Cannon Mac. And he can't complete a pass. He's forced in below the goal line, loses it to Team Blue. But now they're having trouble steering it out. Into the slot, loose puck comes. Little backhander steered aside by Logan Johnson of Team Blue. Shot through traffic. Johnson followed it. Didn't have to make a stop as it trickled just wide to his stick side. Now Team Blue controlling for them. Number nine, Joe Costa. He sends up the left wing side for Bryce Corner of Seneca Valley. She tries to center it. Puck now left wing corner for Team Blue. They try and work it out from behind the net. Team White had the numbers and they gain control. Trying to exit the defensive zone. And they chipped up the boards and can't get it all the way out. The Team Blue is forced to tag up on side at least, allowing White to bring it back to neutral ice. They dump it in. Both teams will change lines as Tyler Durstad of North Allegheny controls for Team Blue. He'll leave it up the boards for Jimmy Sturm of Cathedral Prep. Now up through neutral ice. Team White has it. Two and a half minutes gone by opening period. 3A All-Star game. No shots on goal yet. There's a rip by Team Blue goes wide. Team White trying to force it up the far side boards. Dumped back in by the blue side. Sturm controlling again for Team Blue. Chips it back in attacking territory. Good one-two pass. But missing the net was number 10, Jimmy Sturm of Cathedral Prep. Good feed by Michael Spokane of Seneca Valley. Actually, the shot might have been Hayden Shimko of N.A. Not 10, it might have been 11, but either way, missing the cage. Now Team Blue back in their own zone, trying to get it back to neutral ice, and they will. This is Aaron Miller. He have a late announcement, number 13 for Team Blue. Steers it in towards the cage, and it's corralled there. And Ryan, I'm sorry, Adam Ulan, Peters Township senior, is getting the start for Team White in between the pipes here in the first period. Of course, each team has three goalies, and they'll each play a period, just like the NHL level in the All-Star event. I believe we have Logan Johnson to our left. I think that's correct, <clears throat> starting for Blue. Yes, correct. Definitely correct on that. Number one for Team Blue. Although I should say the old days of the NHL event, now you got the three-on-three -three tournament 
yeah. format, so all the it's not full on games anymore, of course. Team White has it high slot towards the cage, trying to deflect it home, but deflected wide. Logan Johnson did not have to make a save on that one. Team White, though, keeps the pressure on. Trying to chip a puck to the back door in the high slot there was Joe's, Josh Cripp of Canamac. Team Blue able, though, to push it back up the ice, right wing side. Team White chips it back to neutral territory. Vieira has it for the blue side. Goes cross ring to his defensive partner. Now up the ice for Clay Patochny of Butler. His shot right into the wickets and covered up by Ryan Heil. I'm sorry. Adam Ulon. Senior Adam Ulon starting in Peters Township. Peters has more than one goaltender uh, that could probably be in this game. They, they rotate like three or four goalies yeah. down there. Uh, Wilbert started in the uh, playoffs last year and had a tremendous run. So, Yeah, Peters well represented here today. Coach Rick Tingle, uh, one of the coaches as well. So He brought his whole staff as uh, my loving coach Gary Kopkowski not able to attend. You know, and Rick, Rick's a guy, Rick's one of those coaches that I'm sure every year is asked to participate. And he, believe me, those coaches that, you know, coach these perennial powers, they like to defer and let other coaches have a yes. chance. So this is actually, a, truthfully, a rare appearance for Rick Tingle in the all-star event, I would say. Well, it used As the to puck be, trickles up into the net for a face-off in Team Blue's territory. At the selection meeting, you would nominate coaches, and it got to be, like, who wanted to do it after you did it a few times. You right. wanted to give new guys. Now they just selected uh, teams that were at the top of the standings and just picked those coaches. So... It was more of a just like, hey, you're, you're, you're anointed, right. you're yeah. going. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did it the first few years, and then I didn't really do it after that because I figured there's new coaches every year. Let them have a try. Yeah, right. And that's, and again, it's supposed to be fun and inclusive and all that. So, you know, why not? So, as Team White trying to control off the attacking zone faceoff, but Team Blue pushes it back across the blue line. Now sending it up ice with some speed. Trying to attack is Gio, Gio Saracin of Seneca Valley, the senior. Might have just butchered that name. <laughs> Sarah Sheen. Thank you. Sarah Sheen. As <laughs> two, my, two instinct, to my instinct told me I butchered that one. Raymore across for Team White. Leaves it for one of his mates. That was uh, Deemer. But Team Blue able to steal it from him and push it back up the ice. Sarah Sheen and it will dump it back in as Team Blue will change behind the play. 11-15 to go here in the first period. Still scoreless here at RMU Island Sports Center. The Class 3A All-Star Game. Capping our coverage, a full day of games here. Started at 10.45 this morning, and they've run right on time, which we always love here at the Trib Life High School Sports Network. Bravo. Honestly, though, very hard to do. Four games in one day, it's very hard to make an event like this run on time, and, and they're pulling it off today. Uh, so very good well on, good, good on them, as, as you might say. As... Team Blue able to steal it away in their defensive zone, and they will push it up ice. Now, Good regroup there. <clears throat> Blue side again, defensive zone, that trying to just get it up ice, and they will. That was good teamwork by Patrick Kelly and Connor, ba Connor Bachman. There's a three on two for the White. Uh, team White break it in, leaving it. And shot attempt block, that was uh, Griffin early trying to get a shot off, but Team White keeps it in at the blue line. Now corralling for them is Anthony Sandor of Mount Lebanon. He goes up to the top of the key at the point and nearly deflected home by Sandor. A shot in from the point by Vince, Vitici Vince Vituccio, but never makes it through to Johnson as Team Blue will finally get it back to neutral territory. Under 10 minutes to play in the first period. So we see, Adam, the white team has a group of Peters players, a group of Mount Lebanon players, and now a line of central players. And then the fourth line that's kind of mixed. And, of course, you know, you, you, nice, you get that familiarity, let the kids play together. And, of course, it helps your attack, of course, if you're trying to win the game, which, of course, you know, fun though this is, both sides certainly want to win the game. So you want to experience this with your buddies as well, so they get a chance to do that as Team White will push it up with some speed. Gaining the zone is Jay nice. Orvitz of Canamac. He's shot. Johnson, I think I did get a piece of that, steered it into the corner. Team Blue having trouble clearing. Stolen there by Team White. Backdoor pass, but 
Forced to take it on the backhand was Brian Freyvogel, and that allows Team Blue to control it behind their own net. Nice Trying move there by Mac Martin. Found his uh, teammate from Central, Freyvogel, right in the slot. Uh, Bill Freyvogel had two good chances right there, just not able to put one home. Yeah, that initial pass, he just was forced to take it on the backhand instead of one timing, and that pretty much allowed Johnson to get over and cover. As we had an icing call, a faceoff will come back in Team Blue Real Estate to the left of Johnson. Should mention tonight's officials, Jacob Roberts just dropped the puck over there, and this is, we're going to have to call him Mr. Helbig because I don't know his first name. So we'll call him Mr. Helbig. Yeah, Jake I know is one of my former players, so that was easy. <laughs> There's a shot deflected wide of Johnson. His team White tries to press the attack here. Team Blue with the steal. Three on two. So as many balls as they had a good rush, this could be one. Here's a pass. It's offline. Aaron intended for Anthony Adamski. Puck now. Team Blue, the left point, trying to dump it in. And now behind the net. Team Blue, in the attacking zone. Trying to get Adamski again. He'll try and turn it down into the corner for Clay Patochny. He plays it around the boards. Out to the point for Colin Patton. He plays it right back in behind the white team net. White side able to get control and back to neutral ice where Frey Vogel will take over. Tries to dish it off to Palombo. Team Blue able to chip it back into attacking territory. Team White has it though behind their own net with some speed flying around the horn. Johnny McDonald back to neutral, but Team Blue is there. Tyler Dirtstadt of North Allegheny up the ice for Gino Sarashino of Seneca. He'll walk into the slot. His shot pad save by Ulan. Sarasheen still has it, but backed right into Team White. Didn't know they were, th the defender was coming up behind him. Gets it back, though, left wing side. Now for Team Blue, it's Bryce Corner, also of Seneca. Now it's Durstadt of NA. Ten Out minutes to the in. Point. Centering feed broken up by Team White. Pushed ahead, and they're going to call a trip here on Team Blue as coming through up center ice was Christian Stewart, and he's taken down. So we will have a power play chance for Team White here with 6.53 left in the first period. Reluctantly called by Jacob Roberts. Yes. The, the officials want nothing more than the call. They do not want to call penalties in, in an all-star game. And I used to make it a point to mention to the players, please don't take a penalty because then I have to pick someone not to go off of a line. So we're trying to get everyone out on the ice. So now instead of a five, you have four for the blue team. First power play opportunity. 6.53 to go, first period, no score. Now it's Rotello, his shot right into the chest protector of Logan Johnson. That was a good rip by Frankie Rotello of Canamac, the senior, but Johnson saw it through traffic. Johnson, I believe, is leading 3A in goals against average. He was a guest on the power play show this past Wednesday. He's he a good guy. Yeah, the goalies are generally generally good guys to talk to. Obviously, usually intelligent and well-spoken and uh, certainly happy to talk about their teammates. He was. He didn't He didn't enjoy as much the rapid-fire personal questions. Ah. <laughs> we, the rapid, like, so, so, so the lightning round was not his cup of tea, is what you're telling he's me. He's going, oh, jeez. Then he had to think about it. <clears throat> Dumped down ice by Team Blue. As the penalty kill continues, they don't have the penalty time up on the board, so we'll just. No, they do. 107. It's okay. The, okay, the, the beam is blocking me. Thank you, sir. You have to go higher or lower the right. heating beam. The PIO yeah. show off social media presence this season. Follow us online for news. Got a whistle. 5.58 remaining, first period, 105 on the penalty to the blue team. We currently have no score. Face off to the right of Logan Johnson, he covered one. White team wins the draw, and they'll set up shop here. Center point, now left side, down in the corner it goes. Play back out to Vituccio. He'll go cross rank. Fired in Johnson, pad save. And cleared around the boards, but not out. Fatuccio recovers for Team White. Fatuccio now. 
Plays with it. He'll find Erdley. Erdley on the half wall. Goes center point to Ruddy. Trying to center. One too many passes, and Team Blue gets the steal as Dominic Borriello will clear it. 27 left on the on the power play, still scoreless. Yeah, using an umbrella setup, they tried to go through the formation for the one-timer. It's picked off nicely. Erdley gains the zone, tries to leave it for a teammate. George now walks into the slot, rips one. And picking again out of space is Johnson with the glove. Eight seconds on so the penalty. Time enough to win the draw and maybe get a shot off as Team White will change lines here for the balance of the power play time. You have eight seconds on the clock, and you have the one or two to get the player back in the zone. So off this faceoff, if they win it cleanly, it's going to be Mac Martin taking the draw with Palumbo and, and Freibogel out there as his teammates from Central. Okay. Nice clear by Blue. Yep, that will kill it. And Team Blue will try to press the attack here back to five strong. We'll pass along the goal line off a of skate. It's loose in the crease. And Ulan will cover it. That was 16, Jacob Krasuski from Cathedral Prep, the sophomore down below the goal line, trying to pop it off of Ulan's equipment to get a rebound in the blue paint, which he did successfully, just no one there to, to hammer it home for the first goal. And I will say that is the second time I've heard Billy Joel pump through the PA system since I got here today. Must I have approve. The greatest hits I approve. It's, I, I'm, I'm on board. Props to the PA guy here at Island Sports Center today. As Team White controls behind their own net, plays it around the boards. Kept in well there. Yeah, kept in nicely, but Team White has numbers behind their own net. Trying to clear. Broken up nicely by Team Blue along the near side. They have it. Trying to center it was Jimmy Sturm. Knocked loose puck, kind of flips back towards him. Not really a shot there, but Ulan does make the play and cover it with four minutes left in the first period. Hayden Shimko, the junior from North Allegheny, was in good position as the high forward as the white team tried to break out on the left side. Freibogel, I pressured him. Uh, Freibogel ended up blowing a tire there, and Shimko was able to keep it in, and now the blue team will have the faceoff in the right offensive circle. Faceoff one by the blue side, behind the net, they come out to the point. Low shot in on Ulan, had to juggle that one, but makes the stop with 3.52 on the clock. The team blue after the PK, feeling, feeling the momentum, trying to press for a, a late goal here. Nice job by Aaron Miller. He went forward on his uh, forehand side and stepped around the white center. The white center needs to stay in front of him, and then Miller was able to circle the net and feed the point. <clears throat> team blue. Adamski brings it through the zone. Guarded tightly, tries to drop it off. Nobody there to help him. Comes out to the point. Kelly holds it in for the blue side, only temporarily. Pachachny regains, walks in the slot, rips one right into the PIHL emblem on Ulan's jersey, and he'll hold for another faceoff. Seen right after the penalty kill, get a little boost to Team Blue. They put the pressure on. They've spent the last... Uh, much of this minute here in this offensive zone and they created a couple face-offs where they get a chance. 3.19 on the clock. Oh, good toe that, save that on a deflection save. there. Kelly threw it towards the net and you're right, someone got a stick on it as it came through traffic. Now Team White off the save, trying to counter. Nice. A little drop pass. McDonald had a rip, but broken up nicely by Adamski. And Blue will counter. The pass, though, offline. This will go for icing. Lucky break for Team White because Team Blue had a 2-1-1 developing. But with 2.53 to go, it comes back into Blue, Blue territory for a faceoff. Something you don't see all the time, Adam, in an all-star game. Back checking. Anthony Adamski right. right there for Plum. Did a nice job tracking back in the defensive zone. Picking up the stick. Preventing the, the good shot that created or opportunity on the three on two rush by the uh, Cannon Mac players on the white side. Off the face off team, Blue able to push it across the blue line. Good read there. Trying to corral here, Sarasheen has it. And he will 
Oh, backdoor pass attempt, but a uh, little bouncing puck. Boriello couldn't one time at home. Look out. It's into the crowd. Hope nobody got smacked with that puck. I heard a smack, and I'm just hoping that was the wall. Yeah, I know. I heard a smack, too. I'm hoping it was a, a wall, not a per. Yeah, they threw it back, so I think we're good. This is where the ushers at the arena come running down to, to check on you. But yep. we saw that pass to the back door. He airmailed it with a little too much pace. He was not able to land that saucer going to the back left post on the blue team. And then it quickly turned into neutral zone, and it was deflected out of play. Oh. Nice save there by Johnson. Very nice save off of a shot from the far, just below the right wing circle. Off that face off. But now here comes blue with numbers. Three on two. Four on three here as it develops. Slowly developed. But yeah, very slowly developed, and that's the point is White able to recover. Not out of the zone yet. Team White trying to gain the blue line. Puck up in the air. It's now Team Blue. Sarah Sheen has it. Right wing side, nice deke. Oh, he tried to double deke around his man and poking it away from him. Well defended by Vince Vituccio. Is that a nice period? Shot from the point, deflected by the blue side defense. Johnson doesn't have to make a play on it. We've got 120 to go in the first frame. Uh, almost a head man pass yeah. there for uh, Costa. Yeah, tried to stretch it to him, but too much, too many sticks in the way. And Team White will get it back to neutral ice. Little speed, little room to work with here. Nice stepping around a man fired. Good save by Johnson in on the One rebound. Minute. As that was flying down the ice was uh, Wyatt George. I'm not sure who came on the follow, but that was a nice sequence by Team White. Better saves by Johnson. 45 on the game clock here as we wind towards the end of the first period. And Team White will take one more run at this thing. George walks into the slot, fires, missed high over the cage it went. And blue, too many white sticks in the way, but they will get there and chip it into the attacking zone. Costa knocked off his stick. Good defense there by Mitchell Crean. And Crean will carry it himself. Looking, passing, and not quite on the stick of Sandora. Leaves it for Crean, tries to go back to Sandora, couldn't find him. Team Blue will just sky it. It's off the rafter. He was trying to kill the clock, but instead we'll have another faceoff with six seconds to go. Yeah, Krasuski just end of the shift. He tried to airmail for the time and hit one of the support beams above. Probably could have just went off the far boards and killed the rest of the time here. We have 6.1 on the clock, and now a defense is on faceoff for the Blue team. Puck trickles out to the point. Two seconds shot. Johnson a save. Almost too casual there, but uh, he escapes. And it is a scoreless first period at a power play in an all-star game. Puck's almost taking people out in the stands. Chelsea Roundtree's putting the helmet on here in between periods. But we got no goals on the board. The three all-star game. We'll be right back. It's PHL Hockey right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees. They build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC, the official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers, and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Own your piece of hockey history with a Penguins game used jersey. Visit J and J Distributing at www.jjdistributing.biz and check out one of their largest selections of Penguins game worn jerseys from your favorite pens, past and present. Or call 724-752-1556. J and J Distributing buys, sells, and trades some of hockey's most prized possessions, including the Penguins game worn jerseys, Penguins practice jerseys, minor league jerseys, and new and game used equipment. Browse their inventory today at www.jjdistributing.biz. People ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. 
I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University is a proud sponsor of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Back at RMU Island Sports Center, second period of the 3A All-Star Game 2018 edition. We're scoreless through 17 minutes. I'm Adam Horner, Kevin Zolmanski alongside for the nightcap of today's action. We've had all four All-Star Games. They've all started on time. I don't know when the last time you can really say that was. Have we ever done a hockey game? I can't yes. remember. We, okay. we've, done, we've done one or, one or two. Okay, cool. I, you took two. a little sabbatical, so it wasn't I, I took last year off, but, uh, I, but we did at least one your, your first year at the network. I know we did, so at least one. I believe you. My memory's just going. I, again, we had this talk before <laughs> the game. I, that's exactly right. <clears throat> so, And I'm starting to reach the age where I won't really have much of an excuse in that area anymore myself. Not that I ever did, nor ever tried to make one. As uh, Team Blue now attacking right to left, they have the puck. And this one is dumped in behind oh. what Team White's cage. We'll get the goalies to you here in a second. For Team White, it looks like we have uh, the N.A. keeper in there. No, no I, that's, I'll Nate get, that's Nate Cab of Central Catholic. Yes, it is. We'll get Team Blue's here to you. Based on the pad call, I'm going to go with that's Connor Strobel of Butler for Team Blue. That'll leave. Uh, no, that could be heel. We better wait and make sure. All right. I'm not sure. All right. All right. Could be right. We might not tell if he ever turns around. <laughs> Puck chipped out by Team White. Team Blue recovering. Aaron Miller has it for Team Blue. Breaks into the corner trying to recover the puck, but Team White will break out. I think you're right. Three on two. Shot attempt goes well wide. Held in by Palumbo at the point, but only temporarily. Team Blue has the Ooh. puck and numbers as they break into the zone. Adam Ski goes. Ooh. Wrist shot score! An absolute snipe by Clay Patochny, and Team Blue is on the board. 15-23 to go in period two. Well, you have to credit Anthony Adamski for beating the hip check in the neutral zone with a little burst of speed down the left wing side. Coming in as a right shot on the left wing side, that made him a shot pass threat and he laid a nice little pass out there for Patochny who whistled into the top corner up over to the stick side of Nate Cava and the first goal of the game at, with 15-23 remaining in the second period so chalk that one up is uh, at the 147 the mark team goal scored by number 6 Clay Patochny with assist number 8 Anthony Adamski. Adamski, one assist. And number 13, Aaron Miller. And Aaron Miller, a late addition, Time gets a point as well. Remaining in the first, second period. So Team Blue on the board early in the second with a, an absolutely beautiful wrist shot. Nothing, and I mean nothing, that Nate Cava could do on that one. It's played back in towards Cava, but uh, puck trickles wide of the cage. No sh real shot there. Team White on the attack now. Love to answer that goal here early in the second. Centered out in front. Nobody home on the pass attempt by Wyatt George. And now <coughs> the blue side again on the counter. Four and two. Miller leaves for Patochny. Rips one. Save made, rebound, puck is loose, sticks everywhere. White team able to clear. And first shot, hit the post, and then Cabot was able to push to his left and shut down the rebound of a wide open cage. And Patochny, this Patochny Miller line is, was feeling it on that first uh, shift for the period for them as uh, Team Blue will change it up now. Sa Sarah Sheen has it for Team Blue, leaving it for Donovan Cullen. Now behind the net, Team Blue. In front, turning, shooting, save made by Cava. Down low. This is Gilarowski of Peters slash the white team. Plays <laughs> it around the horn. Out to the point now. Orvitz. 
tried to feather one towards the cage, but it's sticked out by the blue side D. Boriello has it near wing boards. Gets it up ice and out of the zone. And Sarah Sheen tried to work the give and go with Cole and Patton, but Team White's D breaks it up. Now Sarah Sheen rips one. Tried to go high stick on Cava. He fights it off, and here comes the white side up the near wing. As it's Erdley. He couldn't do anything with it. Now the blue side. Costa couldn't take the pass. Ooh. He will get it. As if now he realized he has to tag up. You can't, I saw your arm go up, and I think Costa realized it at the last second. But the official never put his arm up. No. He could have kept going. <coughs> yeah, and that's the. I think he said, you know what, I'm not going to risk it. He had a guilty it. conscience. Yeah, well, that's it. That's it. Guilty conscience gets him as Costa <laughs> now pursuing the white side D. It's, I, I think he saw your arm go up, and he went, oh, my gosh. Kevin Zomanski influencing the game. We better get out of here. Oh. As there's a blocker save on number 18, Donovan Cullen. There's a break. Oh, big break. Three on two for Team White, but it's going to be the shooter walking in and a good save. I, I think it's Strobel. Uh, I think Strobel, you're right. yeah. Connor Strobel. Oh. And walking in on the counter and addition, a little backhander, number 16, Jacob Krasuski of Cathedral Prep. Little breakdown in the defensive zone for uh, the white team, and the blue team capitalized again there with that looks like it's a 4.57 mark of the second period. It's going to be Krasuski from Cathedral Prep. I may be unassisted. I'm not sure if they're going to be generous or not. Yeah, I, yeah, that way. Well, yeah, that was, <coughs> he just kind of picked up a loose puck and, and walked in. Let's see, though. By number 16, Jacob Krasuski. Assistant number nine, Joseph Costa. They will give Costa a helper. Oh, shot off the pipe, rebound. Does Team White put it in? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. On the strong four check, Team White answers right back. Just 20 seconds later, Team White on the board. We'll see who gets the goal. That was quite a flamboyant celebration afterwards as well as the white side makes it 2-1. And the Team Blue talking this over with the refs. They say that should have been a dead puck. We'll see what the decision's going to be. And I think they won the argument. It's going to be no goal. They're going to have a face-off. They're going to call a kick. Oh. Yep, that's, you, you got it, Kevin. That's exactly right. Helbig says that was a kick. Oh, puck kicked into the net. So Team White, goal disallowed on a puck kick. We're going to mark that down anyway. Yeah, we're going to mark it down as goal away for a kick in. Again, so I'm not sure. I'm not totally sure who put it in. I want to say it was uh, number four, Johnny McDonald. I'm not 100% on that. But 11 and a half to go in the second period. Score then thus stays 2-0 blue team. Here in the three All-Star game, we have controversy here in the All-Star game. <laughs> I mean, who knew? Puck comes around the horn, Team White. No video replay. We do no, not have that. No, we do not. Although, you know, no, no one tell anybody that, that uh, Chelsea's filming over there. Technically, we could, we could look it back. Up for you know, cue it up for him. Oh. And Team Blue makes some pay. Just roofing one. Number 15, Tyler Draper. What a sweet wrist shot. So 57 seconds after the second goal, Team Blue makes it 3-0. 11.06 on the clock there, so 5.54 into the second period. It's Draper with a nice drop pass. Did not see who made that pass. But again, he went high over the sixth side of Nate Cava, and the Blue team now leads 3-0. I mean, it just... Top of the right circle. He just ri roofed that one. I don't think Cava ever Blue saw it coming. By number 15, Tyler Draper. An assist to number nine, Joseph Costa. Costa's second assist. And number 16, Jacob Krasuski. And Krasuski gets a helper, so two points for him. In the second period. As Team White pressing here to try and get a, another shot off, but... Unable to turn it into anything. Ten and a half to go second period. Three nothing Team Blue in an action packed second period thus far. 
So it was nearly 2-1. to one. Seconds later, it's 3-0. Team Blue after the disallowed goal. 37 seconds later. <clears throat> so a two-goal swing for Team Blue to really make this a deep hole for the white side. As Team Blue again attacking, Cava able to stick it out of there as they try to send one in, into the crease. Controlling for Team Blue is Vieira. Good His pass. Check. Aaron, and Team White's got numbers towards the cage. Oh. Slapping it from below the dot was Team White, and equal to the task is Strobel. That was Giovanni Palumbo right there that went with the big slap shot right in the right wing circle. You know circle. what? It is 29, Ryan Heil in oh. between the pipes. They have finally, he finally turned his back to us, so it is Heil. Okay, so we got that correct. Now. We got that corrected now. Ryan Heil, it'll be, so it will definitely be Connor Strobel in the third period for the blue side. And we already figured out it'll be Nick Guimond. Guimond of Bethel Park for Team White in the third period. <clears throat> Puck straight up in the air, doesn't hit the mesh, stays live. Team Blue has it, wrist shot, missed everything. High over the crossbar attempt there by Bryce Corner. And oh, there's a breakaway for Team White, walking in. Does it go in? Yes, it does, just over the right pad as number nine, Vince Vituccio, gets Team White on the board with 9.06 to go in the second period. Yeah, you and I were kind of focused to the left, and all of a sudden we looked up, and there's a long lead pass for, <clears throat> let me get the, this Italian name right here, please, Vituccio. <laughs> he walked right in, and we weren't sure, but at the, what is that, at the 7.54 mark of the second period, Vituccio gets the White team on the board. So Vituccio makes it 3-1, Team Blue. Credit the lead pass of the white team for uh, picking up their head and seeing Vituccio at the far blue line. <clears throat> There's a long lead pass right there. Trying to find Adamski, I believe, for Team Blue. But Whiteside able to recover. Look out, Team Blue knocks it loose, though. So the point it goes. And assist to number two, Mitchell Crehan. Time to bowl 9.06. Crehan gets the assist of Peters Township. <laughs> so here comes the white side up to neutral ice now across the blue line. Oh, nice spot by Vituccio. Oh, Ooh. Gilarowski was all by himself in the back door, but the pass just a little behind him and... Blue side able to collapse and get numbers. McDonald, now right wing corner. T. White almost look like they're on the power play right now, the way they're setting up camp here. Yeah, the Gilaroski white george Vituccio line with McDonald at the point. I believe that's Crean on the left point. McDonald almost spotted Gilaroski at the far post with a good side-to-side -side passing combination. Patochny <laughs> now comes out, chipped in. Puck comes out. Corner. In towards the cage, covered there. And that's going to be Cava holding for the faceoff with 7.38 as we are just about halfway through this hockey game. 3-1 here at RMU Island Sports Center, the 3A All-Star Game, 2018 edition, capping our day. Four All-Star Games here from RMU today. They've all run on time. They've all been exciting. We've had live streaming video and audio for you all day long. Adam Horner, Kevin Zomanski with the call for you on this one. Chelsea Roundtree on video. Comes White on the attack again. And they come, they, but getting sandwiched. Oh. Still getting the shot off. Steered aside, though, by Ryan Heil. It was a good attempt by Team White, but Heil able to yeah, Grant collapse out. On Erdely that one. had a good yeah. rush there, and then it, it was uh, momentarily poked aside by Connor Bachman with Butler, but uh, Erdely stayed with it. <clears throat> Cabba steers one in the corner. A long shot pass attempt, whatever you want to call it. Not sure what it was, but he does steer it aside. Here comes Team White. And this is Rip. He's ridden into the boards by Bachman. Blue side defense recovers. It's Patrick Kelly. He can't get it out, though. Played in behind Heil. Comes down the ice, and here comes Team Blue. Two on two here. 
Three on oh. two, oh, towards the back door. Couldn't steer it home. Backhander stopped by Cava. It was Donovan Cohen looking for uh, Dominic Borriello of Plum and got a stick on it, just not able to put it past Cava. Yeah, steered it towards that far post, but just steered it wide as here comes Team White. Gaining the zone here, Team Blue able to regain. Pressure applied by Team White, but it Blue able to get it down into the near corner. Centered in front, Team White breaks that up. As this is Korean trying to find Orvitz. And out there with him as well with Deemer, but the puck pops into the bench yep. of the white team. Into the bench area, so faceoff will come at center ice with 5.46 to go in the second period. Usually the coach will flip it flat on the ice. I'm not sure who that is on the staff, but he went full windup, end over and knuckle puck when he threw it to uh, Helbig, the official at the center dot. 5.40 on the clock here, second period. <clears throat> Trying to center. Puck is loose. Cava can't cover it. Blue side still on the puck. Trying to go out to the far point. Too many sticks in the way before it got there. Here comes the white side, Orvitz. Centering feed, back door. Couldn't get a stick on it. How doesn't it ever has to make the save? White team keeps it in play. Into the slot. Pass sticked out, but kept in by Team White. Left wing boards now in across the circle into the uh. slot. And a loose puck below the goal line. Bad angle, couldn't get a shot up as it was bouncing. Stewart and Sandora really making it happen here for the White team. They kind of had it on a, on a string there for a while. Yeah, it was a good sequence, but no, really didn't really get a shot off out of it. And Team White, though, Korean recovers. He will dump it. In behind Heil as Team White will change lines. Calling for the headman pass. Nice and combination there. Brzezuski stops, pulls up, fires a shot. He wanted to lift that one. It went low. Maybe the, the ice starting to play against him a little bit. Vieira finds Krzyzewski. Tries to center. Stuffing it at the post was Cava. Doesn't cover it. Team White able to Chip it up the boards, but not out. Blue side recovers. Pass behind the intended target. Team Blue will have to tag up on side. Good pressure here Claymore. by Team White. Claymore, and there's going to be a penalty coming up. Claymore shot, save made, rebound. Losing the goal mouth. Team Blue gets possession, and we will blow the whistle. And the second power play for Team White forthcoming as that was another blatant, well, that was going to be a hooking call, I believe. Not tripping. It doesn't actually go down. It should be a hooking call. Hooking or, or interference. High stick. I stick the call. We were. I was wrong on both we, counts. We were all wrong. I didn't see that part. But no. good hustle there by Calvin Raymore when uh, Krasuski tried to stuff it there. He's the one who knocked him over at that uh, stick side post of Calvin. Then he Blue went team. straight into the neutral zone and fought his way past the defender. Good Tom determination Blue by Raymore. Remaining in the second period. So. Here we see McDonald and Rotella at the points, and they lost it. <clears throat> Team Blue able to clear through hands and sticks back to neutral ice, but Team White on the puck. Carry it, forced, McDonald forced to peel back in his own zone. Now he finds a man up ice, that's Ray Moore. F high pass to the back door. Knocked down by Team White, but the puck chipped up into the stands. Down to our right. It'll be a faceoff. Should stay in Team Blue Real Estate, I think. We'll see, though, where the ref decides to drop it. Yeah, he will. As both teams change lines. 3.02 to go in the second. Nice job there by McDonald to recoil. Uh, he went into the neutral zone. He was stymied. And instead of just thrown the puck and given it up on the power play. He kind of recoiled back in his own zone and uh, got a nice pass to the far side in front of the white bench. Team White will try to set up that power play, trying to chip further into this 3-1 lead. Down 3 nothing at one point. Uh, good poke check by oh, White. George. Great poke check. Rashad, oh. score! 
off the crossbar and down over the line. A beautiful shot by number 15, Wyatt George, and a power play goal and an all-star game for Team White, and it's 3-2. to two. Well, what an individual play by Wyatt George there. He held his ground on a forecheck as it looked like Blue was going to skate the puck out. He poked it, kept his balance, took a couple strides, and he picked the top corner over the blocker side of Heil. So 2.43 remaining. It's now 3-2. to two. So the Mount Lebanon Jr. makes it 3-2. to two. Blue side off the faceoff win. Out to the point. Bachman. Vituccio, headman for George, and it is officially unassisted to make it 3-2. This is an icing call, I believe, here on Team White, and it is. Faceoff will come back to the right of Nate Cava, who had a has had a rough second period, but since that third goal has settled in, made some plays, and his team has chipped back into that lead to make it three to two. Puck into the blue side bench, so another face off. Here comes. Oh, backhand somehow did not go in as uh, Fettuccio. How did that not go in? I thought he had Kyle beat, but I don't know if it hit the post or how did get a piece of it steered just wide behind him, but nearly three all. Team White continuing to press. Gilarowski has it. They've broken up that Peters line, by the way, Kevin. Yes. Oh, as in tight as it find its way in, somehow Heil, I don't know how he kept that puck out. I swear I saw it behind him but he somehow keeps it out of the net. Wow. On the, on the breakaway, it looked like he flashed that left pad against the post to keep it out. And that time, it looked like the puck got into the five hole when he kind of swiped that right leg uh, along the goal crease, kind of like you're kicking out behind your other leg and kept it along the goal line instead of trickling into the net for the tying goal. So it keeps it three to two as Team White on the puck. Pressing to tie it here late in the second period. Down 3-2. Working hard down there for team white number 20, Griffin Erdley of Mount Lebanon. Minute and a half. Now help comes from Josh Rip. And Rip of Cannon Mack will play it out towards the point. Crean chips it back into the corner. They play it out. Crean has it. Cross ice McDonald. Shot pass towards the cage. Heil gets a stick up into the mesh and another faceoff with a buck 13 to go until the Zamboni makes its appearance. Well, it's been interesting, Adam, the first two periods. First period was a lot of play in the neutral zone. Then the blue team found their stride. They got three goals. They got three nothing. And now the white team has countered with two here in the second period, the last half of the second period. And three quick ones you'll hear in the scoring summary. They got these things uh Less than four minutes apart, their three goals. So a very fast barrage by Team Blue. I'm sorry, just over four minutes. I misspoke. Just over four minutes. 417 to be precise. One minute remaining in the period. One minute. Here comes Team Blue. Oh. Oh, nice one-time attempt. A little try to a little deflection down low. Comes out in front. Big saves by Cava on the doorstep. That was Boriello. And Cava, through traffic, finds that puck. He certainly has found his stride late in the period. Keeps it 3-2 with 40 seconds on the clock. Well, I think the one he gave up was kind of early. And, uh, you know, you're coming in and you're cold. You don't get shots to, to uh, get warmed up and feel the puck. And now he's settled in here in the second period. He's been outstanding towards the back half of the second period. We have 40.6 remaining on the clock and the faceoff in the white zone. Puck behind the net. Team White is there, 25 to go in the period. Now a steal and a rip. And Boriello. I'm sorry, that's Costa who tried that last shot attempt. Draper now has it. 11 to go in the period. Krasuski. Now Draper leaves it for Costa. 
to Krasuski. Back to Costa. No goal at the no. buzzer. At the buzzer, Costa Please, couldn't make it count. Score stays 3-2 Team Blue through two periods here at Army Island Sports Center, the 2018-3A All-Star Game. We'll take this break and be back with your two-period recap on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. 3A Discount Warehouse in Murraysville carries a full line of brand new furniture at discount pricing. 380 Discount Warehouse carries Ashley, Liberty, Vaughn Bassett, and Best Home Furniture, and many more. You can special order your furniture at discount pricing. While you're there, shop the many other departments, including tools, automotive, food, pet and wildlife, household goods and cleaning supplies, lawn and garden, and seasonal holiday decor. Visit them on the web at shop380.com or on the road at Route 380 in Murraysville. Open Tuesday through Sunday, 9 to 5. Shop 380 Discount Warehouse and save big. Check out the new Trib Live High School Sports Network on social media this season. For breaking news, scores, pictures, videos, links to our articles, and more, follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle Trib Live HSSN. Get in the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com slash Trib Live HSSN. And on our YouTube channel, you can find thousands of interviews with local student athletes and coaches, plus highlights and full games. The spot for Western Pennsylvania High School Sports on social media this season is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. Hi, this is Josh Roundtree with the new Trib Live High School Sports Network's PIHL Power Play Show. This winter, myself and the coach, Kevin Zlomanski, will bring you the most comprehensive coverage of high school hockey in Western PA. Hey, Kevin, any suggestions on how we can pull it off? We're not goons. We're not bullies. No matter what people say or do, we have to be ourselves. Um, okay. Well, word is that you've been letting success go to your head a bit. Okay, what I do is none of your business. Is that clear? This should be a fun season. It's the PIHL Power Play Show every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock on the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. Hit the ice at Mount Lebanon Ice Center, offering the most comprehensive instructional programs in the area, including hockey, figure skating, and learn to skate classes for all ages and ability levels. Classes start soon along with senior and developmental hockey leagues. Mount Lebanon Ice Center also hosts Friday night teen skates and Friday after school skates for younger children. Birthday party packages also available. Mount Lebanon Ice Center, serving the South Hills for more than 35 years. Call 412-561-4363 or go to mountlebanon.org. For a weekly in-depth look at boys and girls high school basketball in the district, log on to the WPIAL Roundball Report every Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Join experts Chris Harlan, Sean Myers, and James Dotson for coaches' interviews and the latest hoops news around the WPIAL. Oh, and um, Don Rebel is back on the show as well. That's the WPIAL Roundball Report, Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees. They build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC, the official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Back at RMU Island Sports Center, Adam Horner, Kevin Zomanski on audio, Chelsea Roundtree on video, the Class 3A All Star game through two periods. Team Blue 3, Team White 2, scoring recap in just a moment. First, want to remind you that if you're a working professional ready to move up in your career, Seton Hill University has a program just for you. Seton Hill's adult degree program offers flexible undergraduate degree courses in areas like accounting, criminal justice, business, and human services. The adult degree program has five start dates a year and offers convenient course times, financial aid, a 96% placement rate, wow, and career services for life. Register for your next info session, for our next info session, I should say, and learn more at setonhill.edu slash ADP. Seton Hill University, this way up. Team Blue found its way up early in the second period. 15.23 to go. Clay Patochny from Anthony, Ad Anthony Adamski and Aaron Miller to make it 1-0 Team Blue. They would come back with 12.03 to play. Jacob Krasuski from Joseph Costa made it 2-0. 
20 seconds later, a disallowed goal for Team White. They ruled the puck was kicked, and Team Blue would make them pay just... Um, I'm doing math here, so bear with me. 37, seconds. that was what I was thought. 37 seconds later, Tyler Draper from Costa and Krasuski made it 3 nothing. Two minutes later, Team White on the board, though. Vince Fituccio from Mitchell Crean to make it 3-1 to one on the uh, breakaway. And then Wyatt George with 2.43 left in the second on a power play. Just ripped a wrister to make it 3-2, and that's where we stand through 34 minutes of action. That's your Mount Lebanon Ice Arena scoring summary. Mount Lebanon Ice Arena serving the South Hills for over three decades. And uh, glad to have them back this year as a sponsor of our hockey coverage on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Kevin, you know, it, it, it's just an all-star game, but these kids are competitive. They still want to beat the other team. They know the playoffs are coming. What, what, what do you say, to, in a close all-star, not just any all-star game, in a close game like this in between periods, what are you saying to the guys in the locker room? Well, right now, if you're going to make any changes to the lines, maybe you tell them. Uh, if there's something glaring that they're not doing, uh, and say, hey, reminder, we're, we're letting this happen too much. Uh, we need to correct this. But other than that, uh, they're in the room, you're in the hallway, they're drinking water, having chats, and uh, you just keep it very, very short and brief, uh, your instructions, because, I mean, they're not going to be willing to take in that much information, right. really. So say, hey, we did a good job starting here at you know, this point of the second period. Let's continue to do this and that. It's helped us. Uh, don't let them do this, and uh, hopefully – we can uh, come out on top because we're here, and uh, why why not? Let's win it while we're here. So, plus you get a little bragging rights. Exactly, exactly right. Take a moment and take a quick look at the AAA standings as we're kind of at this nice little break point in the season, winding up for the stretch run towards the postseason. Uh, if I'm right, eight teams still make the AAA playoffs. You is, are. Uh, is that correct? So, um, we have Peters Township currently at the top at 11 and at 11, one and one. 11 one, zero, one. Sorry, 11 one, zero. My God, there's a. Th okay. 11 <laughs> one, zero. I, th I was like, am I reading that right? Okay, 11 there's one, win, losses, zero. Overtime and losses and shootout losses this season. Gosh, okay. Seneca Valley is Go 10. Go by the points. Okay. That's a good idea. Let's do that. So, <laughs> Peter Setchup has 23 of those. Seneca Valley has 22. Cathedral Prep with 19. Mount Lebanon with 18. North Allegheny with 18 as well. Bethel Park, 15. Beth Sorry, Butler with 15. Bethel Park with 11. That's right. Uh, then Canamac has eight. Central Catholic has eight. Plum has eight. So you're looking at three, four, five. So down to Bethel is your one through seven. The eighth spot is a log jam in terms of points. Now, if wins mean anything more, Cannon Mac has four of those. So does Plum. Um, and Plum does have three games in hand on Cannon Mac. So for Central, they need more Ws. I mean, if, 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 I'm sure the first tiebreaker is going to be, well, how many of those points came from wins? Yeah, um, I know in the NHL they call it uh, regulation overtime wins yep. row. Right. Uh, so I have not been privy to the playoff committee conversations. I'm going to assume it's something similar, wins in regulation, yeah. uh, points in regulation. But it, what's interesting, I mean, as expected, Peters Township at the top. Seneca Valley really powered by their – defense 25 yeah. goals against only That's 38 goals yeah. for that is why logan johnson was starting this game in goal he's a tremendous goalie um i'm interest it's surprising to me although they did graduate 12 players central went from first seed in the playoffs last year now they're sitting at ninth in the 10 team standings plum the double a state or double a penguin cup chance last year uh, we're not pleased with having to play in 3A this year, but they've got four wins, so they're doing okay after graduating a significant amount. I mean, they're obviously not in a position they want to be, but uh, I think we could say they're maybe doing better than they thought they would. Yep. So there's a three-team log jam for that final playoff spot. Bethel Park started at 0-5. They're now 5-8-1 with 11 points. It's going to be interesting. Uh, even surprised to see North Galgani at the five spot right now yeah. so credit mount lebanon to really surge in the standings um if the playoffs started today and they don't it would be na at mount lebanon it would be butler at cathedral prep always a fun trip it would be bethel park at seneca valley and we're going to go by the standings here it would be probably plum yeah because they have 12 games right. played versus ken mcmillan right. five 
Plum would be at Peters. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And I think we've seen tonight Plum's talent has shown through in the I think in this game there. They've they've uh they've they got some good players there as all these teams do. And it's Triple A's been competitive ever since they reformatted this a couple a few years back. Triple A's always been ultra competitive and that has continued here in 17-18. We'll take another quick break, come back with the third period. After two, Team Blue three, Team White two in the 3A All-Star game. You're listening to PIHL High School Hockey 2018 right here only on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. While the weather outside may be frightful, the winter high school sports is delightful. That's here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Log on to the Trib, hssn.triblive.com for weekly audio and video coverage of boys and girls high school basketball, WPIAL wrestling, and PIHL high school hockey. The warmth and the glow of the winter sports season may be heard daily on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. People ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University is a proud sponsor of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Check out the new and improved Trib Live High School Sports Network website every day. Log on to tribhssn.triblive.com for all the schedules, the scores, the standings, great articles, and features from around the WPIAL. And of course, live and archived broadcasts. If you are a high school sports fan, the only website you will need is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network at tribhssn.triblive.com. AstroTurf, a pioneer in sports surfacing, proudly supports high school athletics. Visit one of their 280 fields in the tri-state area to see their cutting-edge technology. AstroTurf's focus on R&D enables them to provide innovative surfaces that protect athletes and stand the test of time. AstroTurf now propels performance with iconic turf fields and legendary record tan tracks. They manufacture, build, and maintain a full range of turf and track systems for total quality control. Learn more at astroturf.com. Back at RMU Island Sports Center, Adam Horner, Kevin Zomanski on audio, Chelsea Roundtree on video, the 2018 Class 3A PHL All-Star Game. And it has been an exciting first couple of periods. 3-2, the score, Team Blue leads Team White through two periods. Uh, certainly a couple of candidates for a post-game interview, Kevin. Um, all you know, scoring in the second period. Yeah, all scoring in the second period. Yeah, we got two points each for uh, um, J Jacob Krasuski and um, Joseph, Co Joseph Cost, although I'd give the nod to Krasuski at the moment because he has a goal and an assist as opposed to two helpers. But all that said, um, what I love about the All-Star Games is seeing more than one kid. You know, I love when you get all different kids on the score sheet and, you know, you want to see 15 names get on there, you know, everyone with a goal or an assist. And that's what we've seen for the most part here. Uh, almost every goal has featured a, a different kid involved and a lot of assists dish out tonight. So um, it's supposed to be fun. You want to see offense. You want to see some competition, which we've seen. Again, it's a one-goal game through two periods. Well, the difference is kind of obvious. When you're on your own high school team, you have a couple lines that are usually re relied upon to lead the offensive attack and a couple lines that you're hoping are just plus – uh, yeah. lines we're here they all can put the puck in the net and that's one of the challenges coaching it because you got to try to tell them hey don't extend your shifts like you're on your own team because we're trying to play everyone right. so try to change together as a line and not extend yourself uh and, and everyone out there is going to be capable of putting the puck in the net as we see on the blue side they're going to go with the old mustang line up between boriello uh, damsky and costa are going to start for the blue team with corner and North Allegheny defenseman, probably Bernardo Vieira. And nope, we, it's Duderstock. And, and it'll be the Peters line going up against them. And I'll say this. I think the Plum kids have earned have earned a shift together tonight. They've all played well separately, no doubt about it. But we see that's an adjustment that Coach Bagnata and Rico made in the locker room to come out with a different line combination. 
So underway in the third. Quick pass, quick shot, quick goal. They're not sure who got it. And the bell, are you kidding me? The celebration, they're doing a kick field goal kick with a hockey club. <laughs> Team White ties it at three. I'm glad we got that one on video. 11 seconds. Wow. Six, <laughs> 16.49 to go, you say 11 seconds is Team White on the one timer. And I'm, who got the goal there? Uh, it was one of the Peters guys. It was guys. one of the Peters I think kids. it was uh, the center right there because it yeah. was a right-handed shot. I think so it was, it was Deemer, Deemer. Conrad Deemer. From George. I believe they are teammates on the Predators so AAA team. team. Goal, scored by number 18, Conrad Deemer. Deemer does get the goal. With assist number 15, Wyatt George. And number 12, Calvin Raymore. Calvin Raymore also gets a helper. There's a shot and the goal! Team White takes the lead. Walking in and sniping one over Connor Strobel. His glove side shoulder and Team White has made it four to three. 28 seconds later, 39 seconds into this period. We need to get a chance to say that Connor uh, Strobel was in goal to our left for the blue team and Nicholas Nick Guimon to our right on the white team. And that line of uh, Ray Moore and George and Deemer struck for two quick goals in the first minute as uh, Rotella just got goal. taken out by a sniper there. Number four, Johnny McDonald. The defense is chipping in. Number 18, Conrad Deemer. Deemer on the helper. And number 15, Wyatt George. George, his third point of the night. Uh, the goal 16 12, remaining in the third. So period. let's, I mean, again, it's just an Ulster game, but let's put this in perspective. This is coming back from 3 0 down with four unanswered for Team White. So very impressive. Correction, that was 16 21 remaining in the so third. So 4 3, well, Team White has the lead. Yeah, credit them for being engaged enough and invested enough to want to come back from down 3 0. Yeah. And not be embarrassed. Uh, now they have the lead. So two quick ones in the f opening minute of the third period. Team White on top, and they have the puck. Yilorowski for the white side. Goes to the slot, pass down low. And I fair to say that um, I think Connor Strobel a bit rattled right now. Yep. A shot through the wickets as I say that from the right wing half wall. And we're doing a baseball celebration <laughs> Some kind. They, I think they drew, where did they draw these things up, these goal celebrations? This is hysterical. Team White makes it 5 3. At the 133 mark of the third period, we've had three goals scored in 93 seconds by the White team, and they now lead 5 to 3 as that shot came from the right wing side. Strobel, that was kind of a leaky one. He didn't hug that post well enough, and it snuck through. The white team goal scored by number eight, Zach Rudoy. And number 14, Christian Stewart. And number 15, Wyatt George. George again. And the goal 15, 27. Well, George has just picked up a playmaker in 93 seconds with three assists. And I have to say, uh, we have done numerous power plays in the center stage interviews with Wyatt George. I don't know what. Right. We could possibly ask him again if he becomes the first star. Well, maybe we'll just mm -hmm. defer to one of the other gentlemen. But uh, we'll, we'll get some insight on what was said at the, the intermission if he if he ends up being our first star chosen. A lot of hockey to be played, 14 and a half minutes. Someone else could emerge as the first star. Well, let's see. Sandora for Team White. His shot fans on a little bit, gets the rebound and fires it home. Oh, Connor Strobel, I feel for you, my friend. 6-3, Team White. This one at the 237 mark, and I'm going to wonder if Coach Baggs is going to take a timeout just to maybe give Strobel a chance to calm down. I think uh, that was Sandora, by the way, getting the yes. goal. Number 11, Anthony Sandora. Somebody say something to uh, to Strobel, please. The team goal scored by number 11, Anthony Sandora. Unassisted, time of the goal, 14-23, remaining in the third period. Now, 
Going to run out of room on the score sheet here. 6-3, <laughs> Team White with four goals in the opening two, 37 of the third period to come take the lead from 3-2 against them to 6-3 in their favor. Quite a third period we've got going here. And uh, I'm not seeing a level on my audio, by the way. Why am I not seeing a level no. on my audio? I don't know. Very odd. We're good? Chelsea says we're good, so we're good. There's a shot towards the cage. And sorry, that was a br brief technical, like, are we yeah, still that, on? You know, you never inside. know. Everyone's in a while. You know, you're like, uh, what was that? All right, Team Blue carrying the mail. Shot, and yes, folks, our good buddy uh, Nick Guymond is awake. He does make the save for Team White. Guimond. Guimond, sorry. Guimond. French pronunciation there. Oh, oh okay, we're okay. <laughs> it's just like Guy Boucher. All right, Guimond. So not Nick Diamond like the old, right. uh, what was that, Celebrity Deathmatch on MTV, if you ever watched that? No. Yeah, you're probably better off for it. I think so. Here's George again on the prowl. Walking in, there's a shot. Strobel the save. That puck never covered. It's loose in the crease. Strobel and his mate somehow batted out of there. This is just, I, I, things have fallen apart on Team Blue here early in the third period. They're just not playing together out there. Costa. It's a delicate balance, Adam. I mean, Strobel's earned the right to be here to yeah. play his period. As a coach, you don't want to yank him, but if he's rattled, yeah. maybe you need to get him out for a brief period of time. There's that's, an that's icing call on Team White. send one of his teammates over to talk to him, someone from Butler, and say, hey, go check on him, see how he's doing. Yeah. You know, if you're talking to him and he's okay, then you continue, but if it kind of gives you that look like, get me out of here, then maybe you report back to the bench. But yeah. here's the Mustang line again, offensive zone faceoff for the blue team. They're now down three with 1240 on the clock. I mean, I'll say this. <clears throat> I think I'll get to my point in a second. The plumb line attacking now for team blue and team white able to force it back to neutral ice. I think the first two goals were just good goals. I think goals three and four he'd love to have back. Sure. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> You know, I, I think if you're if you're if you're if this is a, a re, you know a real game that counts, I think on the third goal you're probably pulling them. Not on the second, but on the third goal, I think you pull them on the third, so the fourth probably never happens. But it's not a regular season game, so like you said, you're gonna let <laughs> the, the very least you so. take a timeout. <clears throat> agreed, agreed. As Team White will try to, man, they would love to sniff another There's one out here, but Ooh. that puck goes deflected up high over into the White bench, and we'll get a face off with just under 12 minutes to play here in the third period from RMU Island Sports Center. Wrapping our day of all-star coverage. 10.45, the first game started. All ran on time to the nightcap here, but started at 4.45. D2, Class A, Class 3A. This is Class 3A, Class 2A before it. And we've had them all today for you on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. As loose puck, Team White in their own zone. Now headman pass up to Gilarowski. Tries to leave it, fanned on it, keeps the puck, but loses it as Team Blue chips it back to neutral. Look out with speed. Team Blue gets there. It's a two-on-one. Wrist shot off the post. Big Ben struck one as Team Blue recovers the rebound, though. Out to the high slot, a big rip and a better save. By Guimond, by Guimond as good shot attempt by Colin Patton. So for the blue team, that was uh, Jimmy Sturm from Cathedral Prep uh, display, putting his speed on display there as he sh was streaking down the left side. And as the right shot, he went far post as Guimond just rubbed the post there that uh, made the save. Uh, following the uh, Lead of Flurry, who was doing that yesterday when they hit the post. <clears throat> yeah. The old Penguins goalie made 14 saves in the skills competition last night in a row. Won that little ditty, if you will. He's doing just fine in Vegas, thank you very much. 
That's an icing call on Team White. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, at, at the moment, they'd be up for the President's Trophy, Wood Vegas, which is mind-boggling. Yeah. But 10.35 remaining third period, which once was a 3 nothing lead for the blue team. Now they find themselves in a 6-3 deficit as the white team has stormed back with six goals. Team White trying to chip it up ice, and they will get it. That was a little bit offside. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a skosh was Connor Erdley. Just a skosh. Gives us an opportunity to uh, tell everyone about the postseason. The JV Middle School tournaments are going to be February 26th through 28th. Various locations will be the first round games. Uh, March 12th to the 15th will be the semifinals, and March 21 and 22. The finals will be at Ice Castle, and we'll hit the varsity in our next whistle. All right, as up ice comes Team White. There's a shot stopped by Strobel. And Blue would like to counter here and make something happen. Under 10 minutes to play in the third period, they trail 6-3. Four, a four-goal explosion to open the third for Team White. Really no other way to describe it. I mean, they just burst out of the it locker just, room. Uh, the dam burst, and here we are. As Vituccio, who has a goal tonight, his shot, a slapper high over the crossbar. Now here comes Team Blue. Oh, nice. Feathered in. There's a rebound. There is no rebound, but Team Blue still has the puck. Please. Shot. Oh, it gets behind. It gets behind. Gimon and it's hammered home, and Team Blue has cut the lead to 6-4. At the initial shot, Gimon just lost track of it, trickled behind him, and somebody gone onto the back door and hammered it in. 9-18 on the clock, so makes it... Uh, that's 7-42? 7-42, thank you. As we both attempt to do math yes. quickly in our heads. Quickly. I always found it easier when it's 15 minutes. I, I, I know. I, I believe me. Don't get me started on this 17-minute period thing. The blue team goal scored by number seven, Connor Bachman. With assist to number 15, Tyler Draper. And number 13, Aaron Miller. Miller and Draper the adding to their point totals. In the third period. So Connor Bachman gets the goal for Team Blue. It makes it 6-4. to four. Game on, by the way, a beautiful glove save as the goal announcement was going on. And off the faceoff, Team Blue hammering it around the boards. Team White back to neutralize. Team Blue will have to give chase as we hit the halfway point of period three. We've got the Trib Live HSSN three stars of the game coming up. Also with our Mount Lebanon Ice Arena scoring summary. At the conclusion of this broadcast, there's a shot attempt, and Strobel got a piece of that. I'm sorry, Gimon got a piece of that, I should say. Team Blue just trying to hold the zone here. They do. Wrist shot, sticked aside by Gimon. Another blocker save. Gimon looking sharp here. Team Blue fires it back in. And now the white side. Playing it through, Deemer. And Comes a rush. Adamski, three on two rush for the plumb line. Now three on three. Wrong footed wrister stopped by Gimon. And that was the right decision by the shooter. I believe that was uh, Adamski. You know, that's a case where you want to pass it, but the pass isn't there, just fire, and he did. And a good save by Gimon is an icing call against Team White. With 7.34 on the if clock. If he would have spotted Costa initially, Costa had a step. He could have went through his right. But then he had a couple back checkers and opted to uh, deliver the shot on Gimon and try to generate the rebound there as Deemer tried to make a pass through his legs. Here comes George on the rush. Oh, look out. Two on one. He tried to drop it off to the trailer but hit the D-man. And that's the problem. No look passes sometimes. Is he wasn't quite sure where to, where to leave it. Puck trickles down ice. Team White behind their own net. And they carry it up ice. This is Orvitz. 
Oh, through the wickets. A wicket. Oh, tried to find uh, Deemer in front, but couldn't get it to him. As Raymore took the pass from Orvitz and tried to find him. Now Deemer has it again. George was open. Pass to him offline. Team White still has it, though. Raymore goes out to Orvitz on the left point. He fires, deflected a, a, by Deemer, but steered aside by Strobel. 6.35 to go. As this one trickles down. There's oh. a shot and a deflection attempt. Nice save by Strobel right there. Very nice save. Look out, walking in, firing. Stopped by Guimond. It's a good shot and a better save. I think that was at, uh, that was 18 for Team Blue. That's Donovan Cullen. As Prep has a, a line out there, Sturm, Cullen, and uh, Krasuski out there together. We got a hand pass. We do have a hand pass indeed. So, Adam, to finish up the yes. varsity postseason, March 5th through the 8th is the first and quarterfinal rounds. They will be played at the high seats, a home arena. The semifinals will be right here at the RM, RMU Island Sports Center on March 12th through the 15th. And then March 19th and 20th, the championship games will be played at the UPMC Eagle Sports Complex. And then Saturday, March 24th, the Pennsylvania State Championships at the Ice Slide Quad Rinks in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Go East, young man, for the state finals this year. As the blue team trying to work the tic-tac-toe, they can't find the back of the net. And Guimond never really had to make a save on that as that puck came through the goal mouth. Here comes Gilarowski for Team White. He tries to find a man in the back door. That was Josh Ripp. The pass unable to connect. Here comes Team Blue. 5-10 to go. Team Blue trails 6-4. Here in the 2018 3A All-Star Game. Adam Warner, Kevin Zomanski on audio. Chelsea Roundtree on video for you. Capturing all those lovely goal celebrations here in the third period. Watch those on the archive. Team, part of, team White put on quite a show in the opening five minutes of this period. Come back from down 3-2. The problem they didn't account for is the place kicker. You need a little bit of run up. Yeah. And he was stationary with some yeah. skates. He couldn't quite connect. He couldn't quite connect with that... Uh, Held glove. Yes. But at, at, but style points through the roof in this Cre period. Creativity. Yes. Oh, Krasuski just went through the crease. Man. Gimon diving back. Luckily had a, a, a righty shot in the back door and he couldn't turn it towards the cage. Here's the blue team again. Oh, shot in, and Guimon equal to the task as walking in on him was Michael Spokane. But he got the glove on it with 4.06 to play. So to recap, there was no scoring in the first, and we saw three goals for blue in the second, two for the white in the second, and now four in the third for the white and one for the blue. It's 10 goals, 6-4, to four, the white team leads with... 3.53 to play. It's now Team White through neutral ice. Shot, save made by Strobel. Puck loose below the dots. Team Blue able to clear. Sarah Sheen has it now for Team Blue. Tries to center. Deemer comes in as a trailer, and he rips one that stopped by. Sorry, Draper, not Deemer. Draper came in. And Gimon equal to the task. So, Adam, I'm going to hazard a guess here. Mr. Sh Mr. Strobel uh, is not wearing Butler colors on his pads. Those are probably Penn's colors. So, yeah. as he's a sophomore in this game. He's probably a rather talented goalie, but as a sophomore, was maybe had a little bit of nerves to start that period. It's possible. Period. It's possible. Walking in there. He's definitely in his groove now. There's another nice save on uh, Vituccio. Pass. Now Crean has it for Team White. Goes right wing corner. Trying to send it out to Orvitz. Three. Broken up by Sarah Sheen. And he leaves it for Draper. I'll go to the back post. It's a 2-1-2. Two -two. 
pass, hopped over defender stick and ends up going behind the cage under three minutes to play. Walking down, here's Vituccio. And he he rips one and scores. Vince Vituccio, that is his second goal of the night with 2.41 to go. So at the 14-19 mark, it's going to be Vituccio on a nice rush by the white team. Erdely uh, led the rush, and he got a drop pass for Vituccio. Did not connect right away, but he recoiled around the tops of the circles as a left shot around the right wing circle. He the come on his forehand into the slot and buried it. Yeah, we're calling him Vince Vitucci. I've got a, an O on here. Yeah, Vitucci. An assist number right. 20, Griffin Early. So it's not us. And number 11, Anthony Sandoro. Uh, the goal 2:41 remaining in the third period. And Team White will now come down again. Under two minutes yep. now as the play continues in the defensive end for the blue team. White Mc team on the, moving the puck around. And McDonald tried to go cross ice. It's broken up. Here's and now stolen. Look out. Here's Aaron Miller. Two on one for Team Blue. Miller walks down. Oh. Little backhand one-timer attempt. Went wide. Blue team following the shot nicely. Got another one off. A save by Guimon. Team Blue keeps it in. Patochny. Down down low, it's worked around. No shot, no pass available. Under 90 seconds on the clock, 7-4 is your score. Miller tried to hit Patochny with the stick on the ground or on the ice for the little backhand redirect on that streaking play. Uh, but we're not able to connect. 119 on the clock here, white team seven, blue team four. Don't forget, coming up, we're gonna have the three stars at the conclusion of this 3A All-Star game. And that conclusion fast approaching, 115 on the clock. Very fast game here with Samboni time. You're looking at just over an hour and a half. And with player intros as well, so we didn't drop the puck exactly at 445. There's a break. There's a break as oh. Adamski tried to center. It did a little spinorama for some reason. Broken up nicely. I believe this was the same final score as the 2A game before ours. I'm sure they got there a little differently. Uh, here's a break for Raymore if he gets it ahead. Oh, yes, indeed. Good feed to Raymore. He walks in, hooked from behind, and they're not going to blow the whistle at this point. There's a slapper and a glove save by Strobel. And Raymore would like to know, come on, man. I mean, I know it's an all-star game, he but that was, I was shot. hooked. He yeah. wanted a penalty shot. I don't blame him, and I, frankly, if this is a regular season game, he probably is getting one. But uh, I think he wanted to pull out his uh, stick between the legs yeah. behind the back move right. on the goaltender there. Again, it was the Raymore Deemer George line as uh, George let a backhand pass right inside his own blue line to Deemer, who spotted Raymore on the up ice ahead of the defenders on a break. And when you're up 7 4 with under 30 seconds to go in an all star game, you're you probably not getting the penalty shot. Probably not getting but that call. You could leak out of your own zone and take a little break or streak out there, and that's what he did. Look out, here's Crean. Oh, oh, his shot just wide. Ten seconds to go. Team White, there's a pass. Uh, rush passing Krasuski. it up to Team Blue. Krasuski, yes, walks in, fires, oh. glove saved by Guimon with 2.5 to go. And that may be the final word in this contest, just about. Glove save and a beauty. Yeah, you, you said it, a beautiful glove by Guimon. <laughs> and keeps it 7-4. 2.5, we'll see if Team Blue can get one more shot off. They win the draw. They rip one. They do get a final shot off, but it will not matter. Team White exploding early in the third period, and they win this thing by the final of 7-4. to four. Kevin and I will take our final break. We'll come back with a scoring summary, your three stars, and final thoughts. The 2018-3A also game in the books. Team White 7, Team Blue 4 right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Own your piece of hockey history with a Penguins game used jersey. Visit J&J &J Distributing at www.jjdistributing.biz 
and check out one of their largest selections of Penguins game-worn jerseys from your favorite pens, past and present. Or call 724-752-1556. J&J Distributing buys, sells, and trades some of hockey's most prized possessions, including the Penguins game-worn jerseys, Penguins practice jerseys, minor league jerseys, and new and game-used equipment. Browse their inventory today at www.jjdistributing.biz. Hit Trip Live has... Hit the ice at Mount Lebanon Ice Center, offering the most comprehensive instructional programs in the area, including hockey, figure skating, and learn to skate classes for all ages and ability levels. Classes start soon along with senior and developmental hockey leagues. Mount Lebanon Ice Center also hosts Friday night teen skates and Friday after school skates for younger children. Birthday party packages also available. Mount Lebanon Ice Center, serving the South Hills for more than 35 years. Call 412-561-4363 or go to mountlebanon.org. Hi, this is Josh Roundtree with the new Trib Live High School Sports Network's PIHL Power Play Show. This winter, myself and the coach, Kevin Zlomanski, will bring you the most comprehensive coverage of high school hockey in Western PA. Hey, Kevin, any suggestions on how we can pull it off? We're not goons. We're not bullies. No matter what people say or do, we have to be ourselves. Um, okay. Well, word is that you've been letting success go to your head a bit. Hey, what I do is none of your business. Is that clear? This should be a fun season. It's the PIHL Power Play Show every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock on the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. Back at RMU Island Sports Center, Adam Horner, Kevin Zomanski, Chelsea Roundtree, your crew today as the three All-Star game in the books in uh, Team White 7, Team Blue 4. Not an easy road for Team White to get here, but they did make it. Let's dive into your Mount Lebanon Ice Arena scoring summary. <sighs> Deep breath for this one. Are you doing it? I'll do it. All right. I got this. All right, no scoring in the first period. Easy. Uh, it got complicated in the second. Early on, just a minute 37 in, Clay Patochny from Anthony Adamski and Aaron Miller made it 1-0. 12.03 to go in the period, just uh, two and a half minutes later. Jacob Krasuski from Joseph Costa made it 2-0. 11.43 to play. Team White had a goal disallowed on a puck kick. Team Blue made him pay. Seconds later, Tyler Draper from Costa and Krasuski made it 3 nothing. So three goals in 2.37 for Team Blue. Team White would chip into the lead uh, a couple minutes later. 9.06 to play. Vince Vituccio for Mitchell Crean to make it 3-1. to one. And then 2.43 to go, White back on the board. Wyatt George in the power play. Yes, a power play goal made it 3-2. to two. That's where we stood as the Zamboni did its job. Team White would pick up where they left off early and often in the third period. Just 17 seconds in, Conrad Deemer from George and Calvin Raymore made it 3-all. 18 seconds later, Johnny McDonald gave Team White the lead. Deemer and George pick up the helpers. It's 4-3. Then, just under a minute later, the eventual winner goes to Zach Radoy from Christian, Stewart, and George to make it 5-3. to three. Less than a minute after that, Anthony Sandora adds some insurance to make it 6-3 to three unassisted. Team Blue would get back on the board with 9-18 to play. Connor Bachman from Draper and Miller made it 6-4. to four. But the final word went to Team White. Vituccio from Griffin, Erdley, and Anthony Sandora at 2-41 to play made it 7-4. And that is where the game ended. That well, wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Well, you were doing that. I made an executive decision on the three stars. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So let's let's run it down for you. Your Trib Life High School Sports Network three stars of the game. Starting in reverse order, Kevin, number three. Number three from Cathedral Prep with one goal and one assist, Jacob Krasuski. Number two star with two goals from Bethel Park, Vince Vituccio. And the number one star and the player of the game with a goal and three assists from Mount Lebanon, Wyatt George. I will agree with all of that because I have no choice. I'm not going to really at this point. No, I, I agree with the choices. Now, again, now question is who do we talk to? I'm going to actually give the vote to Vituccio. So we've talked to George a lot. Maybe we talked to Vince Vituccio Maybe with two we, goals. We could do uh, We could do both. I don't know. See, well, we'll talk after the air. We'll, we'll talk. We've got to do we'll inside uh, production stuff here. That's right. we got we got some stuff to do. But, uh, look, a, a, a fine a fine contest here. Uh, I think a, a very exciting day of All-Star action. Check out all the archived audio and video of TribLiveHSSN.com. Um, Kevin, final thoughts on the 3A game. I, I, one thing's for sure. I think you see why this is such a deep classification. Lots of kids were heard from today. A lot of competition. 
Uh, even the goalies got victimized. Bounced back and made some great yeah. saves. So I, I think this is a great show all around tonight. Well, I was a little concerned early on because there was a lot of neutral zone play that wasn't <laughs> happening much. And then it picked up, and it picked up in a hurry. We saw a lot of great action. Really, what, you, what I come to see is some nice uh, plays. And you're, yeah. you're not going to see, like, defensemen make one-on-one, but if they make a nice headman pass, join the rush, get a trailer, or some good passing combinations, I think we saw a little bit of that today. And then uh, we had a, a, a burst in the third period by the white team that led them to the victory here in the 2018 3A PIHL All-Star Game. Indeed, indeed. Um, it's good know. to be here with you behind the mic again. Always good, Kevin. Always good to, to be with you. And uh, we certainly talked on the air many times over the years. Not as often side by side. A lot of times over the phone, one of us at the studio. But the, 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 those days are gone, at least for now. So I'm um, always good to be with you. And good to have you folks with us on audio and video at the Triple F High School Sports Network for our day of high school hockey all-star action. Once again, the final score here from the Army Island Sports Center in the 3A game. Team White 7, Team Blue 4. For Chelsea Roundtree and Kevin Zomanski, I'm Adam Horner. Don't forget the PHL Power Play Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Good night, everybody. You have been watching PIHL High School Hockey on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Sponsored by the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League by UPMC Sports Medicine, by Carlo University, by AstroTurf, by J&J Distributing, by the Mount Lebanon Ice Arena, and by Trib Total Media. You can follow the 2017-2018 PIHL hockey season every day by logging on to tribhssn.triblive.com. The preceding has been a special presentation of the Trib Live High School Sports Network.